click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study about hard water and what are the exactly the factors which influence the hardness of water. There are certain things which are already dissolved in water and make that water hard water and because of those factors we can actually differentiate hard water from soft water. So today in this session we are going to study about the three main factors which are dissolved in water and which make the water hard water. <music> influencing hardness of water there are three main factors those are dissolved minerals dissolved oxygen and dissolved carbon dioxide dissolved minerals are all the minerals which are present in the water in the form of salts that means these minerals they can be heavy metal which can be mixed with some other things like sulfates or chlorides and mix salts of them and these salts are dissolved salts and are dissolved in water because of that the dissolved minerals make the water hard the second one is dissolved oxygen dissolved oxygen is a tricky one why because h2o is water water itself contains oxygen and that oxygen is in the dissolved form the dissolved oxygen does not make the water hard but this dissolved oxygen react with many minerals and because of that it makes different oxidation products which make the water hard water and the last one is dissolved carbon dioxide Dissolved carbon dioxide is not very desirable in hard water and that is the reason why when we convert hard water into soft water to different procedures, we have a different chamber or a different procedure for just removing the dissolved carbon dioxide which is the last step of converting the hardness of the water into the softness of water. Dissolved minerals. Dissolved minerals are of heavy metals. They get assimilated in water in the form of the soluble salts. So there are many minerals, there are many metals like lead, sodium and more other metals which are already present in water. But these metals are not soluble in water. They get soluble in water once they form salts of it. Let us see how they form salts of it. Thus contact with minerals influences hardness. Dissolution of followed by hydration process in which minerals like CaSO4 which are also known as anhydrides or MgSiO4 also known as olerin react with water as. So now I have anhydrous CaSO4. This CaSO4 anhydrous is not soluble in water right now. But once it is added with water that is 2H2O this process is known as hydration. Hydration is a type of chemical reaction wherein the water clings with my reactant 1. That means over here my reactant 1 is CaSO4, reactant 2 is water. But when I see the product it is CaSO4 dot H2O, this process is known as hydration and this dot 2 H2O is known as water of crystallization. This water of crystallization helps CaSO4 form gypsum which is a soluble salt and this soluble salt of anhydrous CaSO4 gets dissolved in water and thus makes pure water as hard water. Now I have Mg2SiO4 plus XH2O. Over here this X means any number of H2O. Depending upon what kind of olerine I have, I will need the amount of H2O. Now this also is the process of hydration forming Mg2SiO4 dot XH2O which forms a serpentine and this serpentine is soluble in water. Next is due to my dissolved oxygen as I said dissolved oxygen itself does not lead to hardness of water but this dissolved oxygen oxidizes certain minerals that means it leads into the oxidation reaction with certain minerals and this reaction gives products which are now soluble in water and these products are nothing but impurities which are soluble in water and that makes the pure water as hard water. Let us see the different reactions through which it happens. Dissolved oxygen is also one of the major factors to influence the hardness of water. Dissolved oxygen is also known as DO. So wherein when you are reading or when you are writing DO can also be written as dissolved oxygen. Influences oxidation and hydration of metal oxides, sulfides as follows. So here I have 2Fe3O4 in presence of half O2. Instead of half O2 you can also write nascent oxygen but nascent oxygen is unstable. And that is the reason why we have written over here half O2 forming 3Fe2O3. Let us see the balancing of this part of the equation over here I have 2 Fe3O4 let us just have a look on Fe I have 3 into 2 that is 6 Fe on the reactant side on the product side also I have 3 into 2 that is 6 Fe. Let us look at the number of oxygens now O4 twice 
two F E three O four, right? So O four and twice. So four twos are eight plus half O two. Half O two is one oxygen. So eight plus one is nine. On my reactant side, let us see the product side. Three into three, that is nine. So this two F E two O three plus half O two forming three F E two O three is a balanced reaction, and this reaction is known as the oxidation reaction. Oxidation reaction is nothing but addition of oxygen. Over here on my reactant side, I had eight. Plus I added one. So on the product side, now I have nine. Moving on is my hydration reaction. Hydration reaction is nothing but addition of water, addition of H two O molecule. So whatever my reactant is, plus two H two O forming in the product dot two H two O. So whatever my reactant is, just add n molecules of water, whatever is needed for that particular reactant, and that becomes the water of crystallization. And this itself becomes a salt, and this salt is now soluble in water. Now hence we proved that because of oxygen which is present in water, it oxidizes certain minerals to form certain reactants this reactants then on hydration form salts which get dissolved in water thus converting pure water into hard water this reactions are the worst kind of reactions because they not only convert the pure water into hard water but they also eat up the dissolved oxygen which is present in the water let's look at one more reaction which is similar to it over here i have just written it as one reaction with one arrow on top we have the number one oxidation that is happening on bottom we have number two that is hydration happening and we have kept Mixed all the two steps reaction into one step reaction that is oxidation hydration reaction. Let us see the reactants. We have two FeSO two plus seven O two plus two H two O forming two FeSO four plus two H two SO four. Now let us actually look at the reaction and balancing of it. So over here I have two Fe in my entire reactant side. It's only two Fe. Let us look at the product side. It is again only two Fe. The number of S over here is two into two. That is four. This is twice, and that is also multiplied by two. That is four. Over here, let us look at sulfur. This is two into two. That is four sulfur. Over here on my reactant side, there is no more sulfur. Let us look at the product side. Product side, I have two over here and two over here. That is total of four sulfur. So even my sulfur is balanced. Now the most important part of balancing is balancing of oxygen. We can see many oxygens on the reactant side and many on the product side as well. Let us see. I have seven O two. That is O two into seven. That means twice of oxygen into seven. So seven into two is. 14, 14 over here plus 2 H2O. So for 14 plus 2, that is 16. I have 16 oxygens on my reactant side. Let us see the product side. On product side, I have O4 into twice. 4 twos are. 4 twos are is 8. Over here, I have H two SO four into twice. Again, over here, four twos are that is eight. So eight plus eight that is sixteen. Over here, we had fourteen plus two that is sixteen. Over here, we have eight plus eight that is sixteen. So over here, overall, over here, we have sixteen oxygens on the reactant side and sixteen oxygens on the product side. Finally, we balance out the hydrogen. Twice H two and that is also twice over here also H two and that is also twice. So this oxidation hydration reaction of mine is completely balanced. Moving on to dissolved CO two, the pH of water decreases due to the dissolution of CO two from atmosphere. Due to this, the dissolution of other minerals also increases. CO two itself is an impurity, but that is not it. It also enhances the other impurities to be in it and get dissolved in it. That is the reason why CO two is one of the major factors influencing the hardness of water. It itself gets dissolved. It itself disbalances the pH of the water, and apart from that, it also enhances. Or supports other impurities to get dissolved in water. The following reactions are self-explanatory that how dissolved CO2 influences hardness of water. So I have CaCO3. The CaCO3 is insoluble in water, but since the water I have contains CO2, that is the reason why I have written CO2 plus H2. CO2 plus H2 is nothing but CO2 dissolved in water. This CO2 plus H2 forms CaHCO3 twice. Now this is soluble in water, and that's the reason why the calcium, which was insoluble before, has now become soluble and a part of water. Leading to impurity of water. Let us see the balancing of this equation. We have CaCO3 plus CO2 plus H2O on my reactant side. Let's take one one element at a time. Let's start with calcium. I have Ca on the reactant side. Ca is one. Over here I don't have any Ca. Over here I don't have any Ca. On the product side also I have one calcium. Over here then looking forward to carbon. I have one and two. Two carbons on the reactant side. Over here, I have carbon that is twice two carbon on the product side. 
Let's see the number of oxygen over here. O3 plus O2 plus O3 plus 2, 5 plus 1, 6. Again, O3 plus O2 plus O3 plus 2, 5 plus 1, 6. 6 oxygens are there. Let us see on the product side, this is O3 twice. That is 3 oxygen twice. That means 3 into 2, that is 6. So on my reactant side, I have 6 oxygens. On my product side, I have 6 oxygens. Moving ahead with hydrogen, I have 2 hydrogen over here, H2, and over here also I have hydrogen twice, H2. That means this is a balanced reaction. Let's look at one more reaction MgCO3 plus CO2 plus H2O forming MgHCO3 twice. This reaction is exactly same as the previous reaction but in the previous reaction instead of Mg we had Ca. We had CaCO3 plus CO2 plus H2O forming CaHCO3 twice. Over here we have MgCO3 plus CO2 plus H2O forming MgHCO3 twice. Again MgCO3 is insoluble but with the help of carbon dioxide present in the water we get a soluble form of it, a soluble solution of it and that is the reason why the pure water gets converted into hard water. CO2 also influences conversion of calcium, sodium, phosphorus, iron silicates and aluminium silicates present in rocks into soluble carbonates or bicarbonates. Some of them get converted into free silica. For example, I have K2O plus Al2O3 plus 6SiO2. All these are oxides of water, my potassium, aluminium and silica. Plus CO2 plus H2O. Now because of CO2 which is present in water, it forms Al2O3 dot 2SiO2 dot 2H2O plus K2O3 plus 4SiO2. What is exactly happening over here? This water gets attached to this salt. The water has got attached to the salt of aluminium and silica and it has formed a soluble compound of it. Since water has attached, it has got water of crystallization and that is the reason why this salt is soluble in water and that is the reason why this all minerals, which are now impurities, which were insoluble before, have now become soluble for that particular water. And that is the reason why pure 2H2O has now been converted into water of crystallization 2H2O, leading to impure water or hard water. So we are in today's session, we studied about how the dissolved minerals dissolved oxygen and dissolved carbon dioxide are the main factors which influence the hardness of water. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.